What's up folks, Jorge Anito here. Thanks for coming over. Welcome back. Today in our project, The Historical Jesus, Fact or Fake, in this installment we will be looking at Celsus. Um, the, pr the purpose of this uh, project, this playlist, is to consider the secular sources um, that provide a historical grounding for a guy named Jesus of Nazareth. That is to say, if we just lay the Bible aside and consider uh, what pagan, Greek, secular, sometimes hostile sources have to say, uh, what is it that we can glean from these onlookers, right? So we can uh, actually gain a lot of information, a lot of data. Today we're considering Celsus. Um, he wrote against uh, Jesus and the Christian movement around 175 AD and he is considered to be uh, by historians the first major opponent uh, to Christianity uh, the early church father Origen um, in 250 AD would later uh, write this massive document uh, called Contra Celsum uh, which basically means against Celsus and so this was Origen's refutation of the polemic provided by Celsus. But what is it that Celsus had to say? He was a Greek philosopher and he was concerned with this passive movement um, that was that was Christians, right? They followed this, uh, the teachings of Jesus. And so he does reference Jesus and he talks about Christians. And one of the things that he uh, argues against is the virgin birth. And so he says that Mary actually had an affair with a Roman soldier, a guy by the name of Pantera. And so uh, there was no virgin birth. Um, this was just a, uh, an invention. Um, and so he said, actually, Roman, or Roman Mary um, conceived Jesus after some type of union, whether it be rape, or consent some type of union with a Roman soldier by the name of Pantera. Um, he would later go on to uh, attribute the miracles of Jesus to sorcery and magic that he had learned in his travels to Egypt. Celsus says that Jesus traveled to Egypt, um, hired himself as, out as a servant, and gained a certain uh, magical Egyptian knowledge, occultic magic, if you will. And so uh, Celsus says that Jesus came back full of pomp and arrogance and started doing all these miracles that we read about in the Gospels. And so another thing that Celsus says is that Jesus taught his disciples to beg and rob. Um, Celsus claims that Jesus' disciples were demon-possessed, and that was what gave them the ability to work miracles themselves. You remember that when we read in like the book of Acts and some of the letters of Paul, the miracles that um, Jesus' disciples, the apostles, were doing, Celsus says this came from demonic possession. It's the only way they were able to perform such feats. And so, even though this is a misrepresentation of Jesus and his followers, it still adds credibility to the historicity of Jesus, that he was an actual person, and it even affirms the miracles of Jesus, even though Celsus provides a scathing account, um, he attempts to explain away the miraculous nature of Jesus' work. And so... You'll remember in the Bible at one point, uh, the Pharisees were on looking and um, they accredit or they attribute uh, Jesus' miracles to uh, the work of Beelzebul or the work of the devil, right? And Jesus says, how can Satan cast out Satan? A house divided cannot stand. And so we see even as early as Jesus' physical earthly life that there was this... Uh, this thought that there's some demonic possession going on, there's some evil forces at work, and we see uh, that Jesus skillfully refutes that. <clears throat> Considering Celsus, <clears throat> you 
you have to pardon me. I've been sick for, for the past week. Uh, still keeping spirits high. Still trucking on. But considering Celsus, also the Babylonian Talmud, uh, or just the Talmud, uh, there are two um, versions of the Talmud, but the one that's uh, widely accepted is what scholars refer to as the Babylonian Talmud. It's a compilation of uh, Jewish writings uh, that reflects commentary on Old Testament scriptures. And so this would be from uh, practitioners of Judaism, uh, Jews in the religious sense. And so the, Babyl the Babylonian Talmud provides the same sort of flow of thought that Celsus puts forth. And so the Babylonian Talmud <clears throat> um, in Shabbat 104b says that Jesus was a magician and a fool. Mary was an adulteress. In the Sanhedrin 107b of the Talmud, it says that Jesus, or Yeshua, stood up a brick to symbolize an idol and bowed down to it. Jesus performed magic and incited the people of Israel and led them astray. In Sanhedrin 43a, it says, On the eve of the Passover they hanged Jesus of Nazareth. He practiced sorcery and incited and led Israel astray. Was Jesus of Nazareth deserving of a search for an argument in his favor? He was an enticer, and the Torah says, You shall not spare, nor shall you conceal him. And so we see, you know, the Jews, um, obviously against Jesus, um, putting forth this idea, uh, just like Celsus did, um, Celsus not being a Jew in any sense of the word, uh, rather a pagan, a uh, Greek thinker, philosopher, even the Jews uh, will sort of go into the same flow of thought as Celsus, saying that Jesus uh, practiced some type of sorcery and magic, uh, black occultic magic, if you will, uh, that Mary was an adulteress. There's no virgin birth, they claim. Um, this was... His birth was conceived uh, naturally uh, by means of adultery. Of course, we read in the Bible that, um, you know, when Joseph realized that Mary was pregnant, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. They weren't even married at this point, but they were betrothed one to another. And so this was sort of a legal binding agreement, similar to in our uh, modern day, engagement, what we would refer to as engagement, but this was more of a sort of legal binding agreement or contract between two families that, hey, your kid's going to marry my kid, uh, they're going to come together, and so um, you had to get a divorce even if you were engaged or betrothed, and uh, so if you made it past betrothal and into marriage, uh, well, you can also... Uh, be divorced in marriage as well. Uh, but Joseph was going to divorce her. Uh, the punishment for adultery, according to Scripture, is death. Um, it's death by stoning. And so Joseph did not want to subject um, her or her family house uh, to such shame. And so he um, decided um, quietly to dismiss her, and so we re we would read later that Gabriel would confront Joseph and uh, affirm that this is indeed of the Holy Spirit. Rest assured, it's okay to proceed forth uh, with the marriage. <clears throat> and so, uh, with <clears throat> just this being said, what we can glean is that, um, as I mentioned earlier, Celsus uh, never refutes or never says that there was no God. There, there's this whole Christian movement that's becoming a, a bit problematic, and so he's trying to address it. Uh, they follow this guy named Jesus. He doesn't say, no, they're following some imaginary, mythological, uh, legendary dude. He they. This was a guy, and he even goes as far as to explain away some of the great... Uh, 
things that are attributed to Jesus, like the virgin birth, the miracles of Jesus. And it's a, it's a far stretch than what we read uh, from the Bible and even in other secular sources. But he does acknowledge the existence of Jesus um, in his attempts to explain things away. He affirms the existence of Jesus. He affirms the miraculous nature of the work of Jesus. Um, attributes, attributes it to Egyptian occultic black magic. Uh, but nonetheless, he does attribute miracles to Jesus. And the same with uh, the Jews in the Babylonian Talmud. We see the same flow of thought presented in there as well. Uh, there, is never, there is never an attempt to put forth the idea that this, this guy, this Jesus, is merely legend. He is merely myth. But what we see is an attempt to uh, provide a polemic against this historical figure. Guys, I want to thank you for stopping by once again. Stay tuned for our next episode, which will be released uh, next Sunday, uh, Lord willing. Thanks again, and God bless.